You ready for the Word? Yes. You excited about the Word? Yes. Hold your Bible up and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this Word because it is the Word of God. Say, I've got ears to hear and a heart to receive. So teach to me the Word of God. Say, I believe it. I receive it into my heart, my life right now in Jesus name and the church said amen and amen and amen turn with me to Romans chapter 8 we'll begin in verse 12 I want to pick up where I left off before um, Pastor David was here and Elder Tom filled in on Wednesday thank you sir that was magnificent on Wednesday praise the Lord and I want to pick up on being led by the Spirit having the inner witness of the Spirit. And so in Romans chapter 8, verse 12, Paul writes, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Say, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I should hear a better amen. amen. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Say, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Everybody together. Abba, Father. Verse 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Jesus Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. And the church said, Amen and Amen. In the writings of Paul, you'll read that we are to live in the Spirit, we're to walk in the Spirit, we're to sing in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. We wield the sword of the Spirit. We're born of the Spirit. We have the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Paul is emphasizing the fact that we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And here he talks about the inner witness of the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. One of the most important features and facts and revelations of the born-again life is that we are to be Spirit-led. In fact, he says it so plainly here. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Now, sons there is not having to do with gender. It has to do with being born into the family of God. Man, woman, we're all sons of God, uh, according to a scripture. But if we are a child of the living God, we are led by the Spirit of God. At least we should be. One of the most important, no, no, the most important revelation and relationship that we have is our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it is crucial, it is vital that the Holy Spirit leads us from day to day, moment to moment in this life because we don't know everything, but He does. <laughs> He's already been there and done that. He can strengthen us. He can give us revelation. He can lead us into all truth. And we make a mistake when we say, Holy Spirit, I've got it from here. But don't you know the majority of believers, the majority of born-again believers in the body of Christ do not know how to hear His voice? Do not know how to yield to Him. Do not know anything about being led by the Holy Ghost. Don't know anything about the inner witness of the Holy Ghost. And yet we see in Scripture here in verse 16 of Romans chapter 8, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. One of the first things, one of the first revelations... The very first revelation that we have upon the moment that we are born again is the Spirit of God for the 
first time speaking to our regenerated human spirit. Welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Now, he's not speaking that over us. He's speaking that in agreement with us. Look at the scripture. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What an important, insightful bit of information that is. Because the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. There's a lot of time that we choose not to agree with the Holy Spirit. But when we do agree with the Holy Spirit, things go right. When we don't agree with the Holy Spirit, the train gets off the tracks. We as believers need to hear the voice, heed the voice, agree with the voice, walk with the voice. Come on, somebody help me preach today. Doesn't he say that we need to be led of the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, agree with the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, sing with the Spirit? We need to be able to discern and know and agree with and testify together with and walk in unity with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. The Amplified Version says the Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit. The New Living Translation says... The Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. But he also affirms that we are healed. He also affirms that we are victorious. He also, come on, he also affirms that we are prosperous. He affirms that we have spiritual authority. He affirms that we walk in victory in every area of our life. But the affirmation doesn't go anywhere if we don't agree with it. The Word may declare it, but if we're not declaring it, the word, all of heaven rejoices over us. But if we're not rejoicing about it, if we don't agree with it, if we're not affirming it, declaring it, I think I preached one time, if the Father is declaring it and the Son is declaring it and the Holy Ghost is declaring it, why are we declaring it? If the Father says, by, your, by his stripes you are healed, and the Lord Jesus says, by my stripes you are healed, and the Holy Ghost says, by his stripes you are healed, why aren't we saying, by his stripes? <laughs> Come on, three bear witness in heaven. We need to agree with the witness. Doesn't it say, bears witness with our spirit? Our spirit man agrees with it. It's just we need to get it into the heart. And, and say, that's mine. Come on, that's mine. Somebody say, that's mine. You got to hear the ghost, your Holy Ghost. You got to hear the Spirit of God. You got to have a witness, an inner witness of what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to our spirit. And the church said, amen and amen. This is such a powerful concept of discerning that Paul says that's one of the gifts of the Spirit, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, that they, we have the discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits is I can discern that this agrees with the Word, or I can discern that this doesn't agree with the Word. When something comes along, you say, well, that's not of God. Or that, that look, and here's the deal. There's a lot of things that look good, but ain't good. <laughs> There's a lot of things that have the form of godliness, but doesn't have the power. Doesn't have the power. Because you can dress up anything, man. You could put lipstick on a pig, but you don't want to take it to the prom. Let me tell you what. There's a lot of stuff that you can dress up. There's a lot of form that you can have. There's a lot of ritual that can fill your day. But if it doesn't have the power, if it doesn't have the power, it's a waste of time. But why do we want the power? Why do we want the power? God has given us the power. We got the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of us. He wants to lead us, wants to guide us, wants to give us the inner witness. And it's so important because without the discerning of the Spirit, without the witness of the Holy Ghost, the church can be ruined. The church can end up on the rocks of destruction. 
Why? Because there's an enemy that's seeking to destroy us and lead us away from the faith. What does Paul say to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2? The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, that's this time, some will abandon the faith. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a horrendous thing? Isn't that a horrendous thing? That people would turn away from saving faith. Why? They've been deceived. They did not discern. They did not listen to the Holy Ghost. Some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teaching comes through hypocritical laws. Those whose consciousness have been seared with a hot iron. Listen, the church of Jesus Christ cannot just let anything be said from the pulpit. If it's not Word, you don't want it. If it's not Holy Ghost, you don't want it. If it's not the Word of God, it's not the Word for you. Listen, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you will be telling you, that's not agreement with the Word of God. Run! Because it comes in a little by little. Little things tickle the ears. Little things. A new revelation. A new way to do it. A new understanding. Oh, I've got a new vision. Let me tell you about my new vision. Yeah, it doesn't agree with the Word of God, but I, but I got it from God. It's a new vision. I'm writing something new now. Y'all come on ahead with me. No, don't you fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Many will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. That's why John said, test the spirits. 1 John 4 and 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. How do you test the spirit? The Berean believers tested it by reading the Word. (laughs) Hey, what we're hearing, does it line up with the Word? You want to be in a Word church. You want to be in a church where they put the words up on the wall, where they tell you how to find it in your Bible, where the preacher is going from Scripture to Scripture and making precept upon precept. Come on. You want to be in a faith church. You want to be in a Holy Ghost church. You want to be in a Word church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Paul said in in Romans 8 and 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the defining feature of being a child of the living God is being led by the Spirit of God. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you're a child of your parent, the parent leads you in life, doesn't he? That makes absolute sense. Parent takes you by the hand and leads you. Being led implies that you're going somewhere. (laughs) That you've got a destination in mind. That the Holy Ghost is taking you somewhere. The children of God are going somewhere. The children of God has a destination. We're not stuck. We're not just spinning our wheels. We're not just dog paddling. We're going somewhere. The, The Spirit of God is taking us somewhere. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Causes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, stores my soul, leads me in the paths of righteousness. What does my shepherd do? He leads me. That's what shepherds do. They lead, they feed, they protect. He leads me. Still waters leads me. Paths of righteousness. Holy Ghost is no different. The Holy Spirit leads us. That means we're going someplace. Where are we going? Green pastures. We're going to the next level. Going to a better place. Deeper understanding. Greater revelation. More influence. More effect. More prosperity. More blessing. More. Everybody say more. More of Him. Yes, that's right. We're more than conquerors. Yes. So the the Holy Spirit leads us just like the Lord Jesus, our shepherd, leads us. 
into green pastures. The Holy Spirit leads us into green pastures, into greater places, greater understandings, greater revelations, greater experiences. Leads us. You want to be led. You're not going to find it on your own. You want to be led into it. Oh, hallelujah. You want to be led into it. He wants to lead you into it. But the sons of God, as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Uh, So those who are not sons of God are led by different spirits. Isn't that true? Uh, Those who are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. But those who are not the sons of God are led by different spirit. There's a lot of things that can lead us in life. We can be led by our head intellectually. We can be led by our feelings, can be led by our emotions, can be led by opportunity, can be led by need. Uh, We can be led by a lot of things. But the children uh, who are not the children of God, they're led by a completely different spirit. And that's why wicked things happen in this earth. Different spirit, antichrist spirit, led by a different spirit. And they are, their minds have been seared with a hot iron. So they can do the most wicked things and be pleased with themselves. Come on, church. Because they're led by a different spirit. And they justify what they're doing and they're pleased and they pat themselves on their back and say, aren't I doing such wonderful and uh, decent things? And they're destroying everything they come across. Different spirit. Seared mind. Different understanding. But we are the children of the living God. Therefore, we are led by the Spirit of God. And if you're led, you're going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. I am going somewhere in this life. Hallelujah. I'm not stuck. I'm not a tree. I can move. Hallelujah. I'm not rooted to one place. I can move. I heard a teacher say one time, you're not a goose. A goose only knows how to fly one way in the winter. They fly south. They can't fly north, can't fly east, can't fly west because it's imprinted in their nature. They're a goose. They can only fly south. But God has created us to be like Him, that we can go in any direction that the Holy Ghost is going in. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're not limited to our animal instincts. We are the created in the image of the Most High. Our spirits have been regenerated. We are spiritually alive. We can go wherever God is going. Hallelujah. Someone say praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost leads us. Out of sickness into health. Leads us out of discouragement into the joy of the Lord. Leads us out of poverty into prosperity. Leads us out of oppression into victory. He's leading us out of and into. He's leading us out of Egypt and into the promised land. He's taking us someplace. He's leading us someplace. He's not leaving us where he found us. He's not leaving us the way he found us. He's taking us somewhere. If we'll listen, if we will train our hearts to hear the Spirit of God, if we'll listen to the Spirit of God. Galatians 5 and 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let's take that walk with the Holy Ghost. Let's go somewhere with the living God. John 16 and 14. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all the benefits that truth has. Truth is the Word of God. All the benefits of truth. The benefits of your salvation. 
your healing, your deliverance, your prosperity, your joy, your peace that passes all understanding, your victory in every area of your life, your good marriage, your good family, everything you put your hand to prospers. He'll lead you into the truth of all the blessings of your salvation. When the Spirit of truth comes, He'll guide you, He'll lead you into all truth. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Now, here's the thing. There's many, 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 many steps on the way to your blessing. You say, well, I'm blessed today. I'll say there's a, there's a greater blessing. Take the walk. Wow, I'm really blessed now. I say there's a better blessing. Take the walk. Whoa, am I blessed now. I say there's a better blessing. Take the walk. Whoa, my goodness, what a blessing this is. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm saying? And every step along the way, the Holy Spirit just wants to take you by the hand. Come on, come on, come on with me. Come on with me. Let me take you to the better place. Let me take you to the greater place. Come on, church. Hallelujah. 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 Galatians 5 and 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit. You know, when you're being led by the Spirit of God, some wonderful things happen. One, you have victory over the flesh. Two, you hear what the Spirit has to say. Number three, the trust that you have with God. Have you ever seen a little child put his hand in daddy's hand or mama's hand? He doesn't know where he's going. Mama knows where they're going. Daddy knows where they're going. The child doesn't have a clue where they're going. But they know that they're going with the one that they can trust. That they can trust. The child doesn't have to know. The child doesn't have to understand. In fact, there's things that are beyond the child's understanding. Uh, Mom and daddy understand. Come here, son. Let's go. Mama says, come here. Give me your hand. Let's go. The child doesn't understand traffic in the highway. The child doesn't understand crossing guard marks, crossways. The child doesn't understand the dangers of this life. Mom and daddy do. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Let's go. I'll lead you to the safe place. Hallelujah. I'll lead you to the safe place. That's what the Holy Ghost says. Holy Ghost says you, don't, you may not understand yet, but I understand. Take my hand. Let's do this. I, I don't want you to stay where you're at. And when we're going on our path, you're not going to understand everything that we're going on, but it's okay. I got it. The Holy Spirit says, let me just take you there. Glory to God. Look at this. Proverbs 3. Everybody say Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Now, there is, uh, I shared this a week or two or three ago. I saw a meeting with Brother Hagen. It was a laughing meeting. And he was, he, it was in a, a convention hall. No, it was in an arena. And there were thousands and thousands of people there. And the Holy Ghost just tickled his spirit. And he just started laughing. And he never got to his message. He came up out of the pulpit. He started walking through the arena. People just started falling out laughing. They laughed for two hours. Everybody was laughing. That was the whole service. Everybody was laughing in the spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> laughing in the spirit. And after it was done, uh, Keith Moore got up after that service. And he said this very profound thing to say. He says, now... You may be sitting there saying, I do not understand what just happened. He says, but I know that you are really saying, because I don't understand it, I can't go with it. And that's where a lot of people make their mistake. I don't get it. I ain't going there. I've heard this many, many, many times countless times in my Pentecostal ministry of almost 40 years now that many people will say, I don't understand 
tongues, Pastor. I just can't go there. I need to go somewhere where there's not tongues, so I'm not challenged in that way. And I say, listen, open your Bible. Is it in the Bible? There's a reason that it should be. If it's in the Bible, it should be in your life. You need this. You need this. And I'll explain the five reasons that they need it. I don't understand, Pastor. Why would God do that? I just can't go there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. When we're being led, we don't always understand. We're being led. We're not being the leader. We're being led. Quit trying to lead God. Quit trying to lead God and let God lead you because, listen, listen to me. Quit trying to lead God. Let God lead you because God's already been everywhere he needs to go. You're not going to take God some new place. Listen, going backwards out of the word of God to your comfort level hasn't done you any good. You need to be, oh my goodness. We need to be led by the Spirit of God because He's the only one who can get us to the green pastures that we need to be in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Do you direct his path? No, he directs your path. Do you understand it? No, he understands it. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. That means at every point, at every turn, every curve, every up, every down, every place, every way, you acknowledge him. God, you're in charge. I acknowledge you're the one in authority here. I acknowledge, Lord, even though I don't understand, I acknowledge Father God. It's in the Word. I acknowledge Father God. I feel the leading in my spirit. I acknowledge, Father God, that I am with you, that you are smarter than I am. So I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be led by you. Let me read it again. Trust in the Lord. Everybody say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Does that child trust his parent? Yeah, he does. He gets out of that car seat. Mom and Daddy lift him out of the car seat, put him down in the parking lot. Give me your hand, Junior. Junior gives him the hand, and off they go. They're heading across traffic. They're heading across unknown things, dangerous environment, going to the store, wherever they might be headed. The child doesn't have a clue of the dangers of that environment child doesn't have a clue that a car is coming along too fast. Mom and daddy do because mom and daddy have radar. Mom and daddy have a sense of what's going on. Mom and daddy, listen, I would, praise the Lord. Debbie and I were, this is several years ago now, we're, well many years ago because she's a grown-up person now, but, but Debbie's niece, <laughs> Debbie's niece, before she was a grown-up person, she was little tiny and um, we were giving them a ride in our car. Do I have their relationship right? Who was that, Debbie? Hannah. Hannah, that's right. And you were so nervous. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and listen, we had a, a child. We didn't have children, of, don't have children of our own. So we had a child in a baby seat in the back. And um, I was so nervous driving. <laughs> I think I went like 20 miles an hour the whole way down the highway. Why? Because I had a sense that precious cargo was on board. My senses were heightened because I had to get this little one to their parents in one piece. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is, has a heightened awareness of what's going on around us. So we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him. And then what happens? He shall direct your paths. He'll lead you. He'll lead you. Now, much more to say, but I will close on this. When you are being led, 
you are led by peace. Turn with me real quickly to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verse 11. The Holy Spirit is peace. The Holy Spirit is the embodiment of peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Who did he give us? The Holy Spirit. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So my word shall be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing to which I send it. That has nothing to do with today's sermon. I just like that verse. Now verse 12, (laughs) verse 12 does have something to do with my sermon. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. Peace shall lead you. Now, this doesn't mean that there isn't sometimes a a, a sense of resistance to what God wants you to do. The Holy Spirit will always resist what God is trying to do. So you have to have courage, and you have to overcome any fears. But the peace that passes all understanding will quicken on the inside to say, yes, this is the right direction. This, you need to go this way. It's the right time. It's the right thing. Let's go and do this. But the circumstance may be causing some intrepidation on the inside. That's when you just have to have courage. That's when you have to have brave, as, bravery. And, and you say, you know what? I know I'm being resisted. However, I have peace about doing it. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to acknowledge God. I'm going to let Him direct my paths. He will direct your paths with His peace. And you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth. And singing before you, the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if I had time to finish this message, I would say that as we're being led out by peace, we're being led into His love. God leads us into the love response. God leads us into the motivation of love. God leads us to make the love response to whatever the situation was. This is why Jesus' ministry was so powerful that he was moved with compassion. Why? He was always led to a place of compassion by the Spirit. He was always led to operate in compassion, in forgiveness. When we are led of the Spirit and led by peace, we will be led into responses of love. And that's why forgiveness flows. That's why compassion flows. That's why relationship flows. Because the Holy Spirit will not lead you into a hostile response. The Holy Spirit will not lead you into an aggressive response, though we need to aggressively resist the devil. I'm talking about something different now. I'm talking about how we are led into our ministry unto people to be the hands of God extended. The Holy Spirit will lead us into compassionate responses. And the church said, Amen. Did you get anything out of this today? Praise the Lord. Say, I am led by the Spirit. I believe that you are. I really, truly believe that you are. And in the preaching of this word, I believe the Holy Spirit just took another elevated step in your heart. That when you go about your day, your week, your life, the Holy Spirit will be offering checks within you or green lights or red lights within your spirit as to what should I do, how should I do it, when should I do it, how should I say it, all the things that the Holy Spirit wants you to uh, be led into. And I believe, and I'm going to pray this over you in just a moment, I believe that you'll have a a heightened awareness of the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Debbie and I, to our limited ability, we have developed uh, some ear to hear the Holy Spirit. Uh, One of our greatest strategies of ministry and one of our greatest strategies of life is just to trust the Holy Ghost. 
I've seen the Holy Ghost do amazing things. There are things sometimes that get uh, put in my plate that would, you got to do something about this. You just got to do something about this. Something has to be done. And I have found that when I rush in and try to do something about stuff, I mess it up. Come on, haven't you? I can mess things up. Things go to the flesh. Things go to stupidity so fast. But when the Holy Spirit takes care of it, hallelujah, then it gets taken care of right. Stand with me if you would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want to be led by the Spirit? The children of God are led by the Spirit of God. There's a lot of things that can lead us. We can be led by our head. Sounds good, we might say. We can be led by opportunity. Oh, yes, I'll have to take advantage of this. We can be led by our feelings. Well, I just felt that I needed to. We can be led by our flesh, our appetites. I got to have that. We can be led by a lot of things. And none of those things will do us any good. They look good. Opportunity looks good. Feelings feel good. We'll even couch it in, the Lord told me. Oh, God told me. God told me. But the Holy Spirit, there's only one way to be led. And that's by the Holy Spirit. And over time, as we discern more and more, we'll realize, you know what? It looks good, but it ain't God. Feels good, but it ain't God. Great opportunity, but it ain't God. Not for me. Hallelujah. Keeps us out of a lot of trouble. Keeps us out of a lot of trouble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands with me. We have just a moment before we have to close. Let's make good use of it. Lift your hands with me. Holy Spirit, we yield to you in a greater way in our lives right now. And we would ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak a confirming word to us that when we come across things and need to go ways, do things, whatever it might be, that you would give us a clarion word yes, no, now, later, whatever it might be, because we truly in our lives want to be led by the Holy Spirit. We speak to our spirit and our heart and our inner being right now, and we say, line up with the Holy Ghost. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Obey the Holy Ghost. Don't be fooled. Don't be deceived by things that might be, look good, the shiny thing. No. You're a child of the living God. You're led by the Spirit of God. Now with every hand lifted before the Lord, let's just receive that unction of the Spirit right now. Right now, right now, right now. We're led by the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit of God. We're led by the Spirit of God. We're led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oriana Maria la Masi. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't have time to say this, but let me just add a footnote. One of the greatest ways we'll be led by the Spirit is praying in the Spirit. That's what it's all about right there. Praying in the Spirit, 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 praying in the Spirit. The Spirit begins to intercede on the inside. Praying in the Spirit. The Spirit bears witness on the inside. You just pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Oriana Maria la Masini la Masi, Oriana ma boko Oriana ma, e la Masini la Masini la ma, Arana ma Arana Maria la ma boko Oriana ma, Oriana Masini la Masini la Masi, Oriana Masini la Masini la Masi, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it true that when you just go through your day praying in the Spirit, that you have a heightened awareness of things? That you're, you just know in your heart, that's not a God, or that is of God, or, or yes or no, whatever it might be. So just pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. We're going to open the altars here at the close of service. If anybody needs prayer for any area of their life, we'll have ministers down front that can pray the prayer of agreement with you. And uh, God bless you. I'm so glad that you set your clocks right today. I'm so glad that you get up, got up on this chilly day and came out to church. I'm so proud of you. God bless you. Aren't you glad you came? Glory to God. Amen. Wednesday night, more Holy Ghost. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. So I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. The books are outside. You can sign up for the Monday night classes. God bless.